guys so much for hanging out with me this morning. We're gonna do a thrifting video, thrifting plus flowers video inspired. Um, but I, first of all, I, Stuart and I want to make sure that we invite you to something that we're starting to do with some regularity, but the first one will be tomorrow at, is it two o'clock, Stuart? Uh, two o'clock Central Standard Time. We're gonna do a YouTube Live probably out here from in the garden or from my living room or whatever. And that way, if you guys want to ask me questions, put me on the spot, um, then this is your opportunity to do so. I'm not sure how long it will last, but you guys can just, how do they submit questions, Stuart? There'll be like a chat option. You can okay, type there'll be a chat option. You guys just type them in and then we will respond. It's gonna be an experiment, but it might be kind of fun. So if you want to spend some time with me tomorrow, then please do so. But as for today, um, I haven't done a thrifting video in a while, and this seemed like the perfect opportunity because last week I actually had some time to go to some of my favorite spots, secondhand stores, antique stores, and of course Goodwill, to get some containers for two different reasons. One, it's May Day tomorrow, and I love this charming concept of putting together small little flower arrangements to give to people for May Day. And so I went to my, my daily rounds or my monthly rounds to get some pretty funky little containers so that I could gift some May Day surprise arrangements, but also because it's it's going to be Mother's Day. Mother's Day is just around the corner. So I thought you and I might share some ideas of ways that we can use our thrifted treasures to gift to somebody else and put a smile on their face. So I, I went and I bought a bunch of different things that I'm going to show you. This time kind of in some cases thinking specifically of people in mind, but other times just shopping those broad categories that I like to shop of things like pitchers, metal, baskets, those types of, of items and materials. And then I went to Trader Joe's and I just got a whole bunch of flowers. And these, oh my gosh, these smell so fragrant. In our gardens, isn't it wonderful, Stuart? Mm -hmm. In our gardens, hyacinths are pretty much over, but you can still get them as cut flowers. And these, I think, are wonderful to use in different little arrangements, especially for May Day, because anything fragrant is especially, especially sensual and experiential, I think. So let's start out with my container number one, and I'll go around. I think I have maybe eight different containers that I got today. So this was just, sometimes you can just find old, pieces of metal. This was a metal box. I loved it. I loved the fact that the bottom fit into the top so nicely. And then I just put some of that natural floral foam. Stuart, we need to put a link to the video where I described this natural floral foam. It's not like the traditional oasis. I put it in here and then I just created this, what I think of as kind of like a little meadow garden. Now the fun thing about this is the entirety of this arrangement, let me see, I think the container was $1.99 or $2.99. I have about $2 worth of carnations in here, and then the rest of the things were just clippings from my garden to make this arrangement look like, I think, just a little mini field of flowers. I love this look. And some of the things that I have in here are just some of the very new, soft, not prickly, um, new growth from some Burford Hollies. I've got some spent seed heads of Spanish bluebells, just some carnations. And then this may be the only good thing about Bradford pear going to seed in your yard. So I just clipped some branches from some new volunteer Bradford pears. And I stuck that in here and I think it looks really, really sweet. And I think I know exactly to whom I am going to gift this. In fact, I'm gonna take this up to Enid where, for my bookstore signing later today. And I think I'm going to gift this as, as a little thank you gift to the bookstore owner. So I think that will be kind of fun. Um, my next one, I'm not sure how I'm going to compose it 
But you guys know these kind of baskets are, they can be rather pricey. They can be kind of a rare find. And I did find one. This is a miniature little like market basket. I think this one was a little bit more expensive. It was like $6. But I'm going to fill it with, I'm not sure exactly what, but something fun for my sister-in-law who lives in Enid. We're gonna be staying with her tonight. And I thought it would be really fun to fill this up and gift this to her as both kind of a housewarming because she just moved into a new home but also as kind of like a little May Day basket. So any kind of finds at the thrift store that have handles especially especially if you want to surprise someone and do a random act of May Day and just hang something on their doorknob this would be a wonderful kind of basket. So this one I'm getting ready to fill. Now later uh, we're going to go inside and I'm going to show you because if I buy one thrift item for somebody else of course I have to buy one for me and I got this this actually is a thrifted item I got a while ago I don't know if I've already showed this to you but I love it it's got the quality of milk glass and that's another category of things that I love to thrift for in general are glass items so I've already done one huge arrangement for myself in my living room which I will show you in a bit but I wanted kind of a companion arrangement to go along with it with it filled mostly with these delphiniums and some of this other I'm not sure exactly what this is but it's some kind of filler that I also got at Trader Joe's and then also some clippings from my garden now when I go and I buy cut flowers typically I try to buy things for obvious reasons that I can't or don't grow in my own garden so as soon as I saw those delphinium I latched onto these big time because they do not grow at all well in our Oklahoma gardens so that kind of brings me that, and we'll make Stuart don't let us forget to go inside and shoot that arrangement in the living room. Okay, here's my next one, you guys. I love here, here, and I need to wash this out really well before I fill it with flowers. But again, I'm always looking for just basic glass containers that I can re-gift to people. But then I'm also always looking for little metal bips and bops to kind of elevate and enhance some of the more common things like this glass vase. So I think this one I am going to fill. And this might be something maybe if, if I wanna create an arrangement for Stuart to give to his mom, Susu, or maybe even, I, may, I think maybe we need to do one for your daughter, Julia, May Day Her. So that would be a fun thing to do. So this is taking one kind of thing. I think this was $2 and this was probably like a dollar at Goodwill. And it's fun to think of creative ways to put stuff together. So I think that's kind of fun. Okay, Stuart, let's kind of move around the table if we can a little bit. We're trying to stay in good light. I love flat, shallow baskets for many, many reasons. I love them to use to serve chips and things in when I entertain. I like to put them on top of maybe a, a, a pillar candlestick to elevate it and make it, make it a holder for something. This would be, make a great bread basket. But I also like to mix textures. So this one was, I think, three dollars and belong to someone named Randolph <laughs> at one time and I got this at Goodwill and I knew that I had this vase in my basement I love really large great big receptacles for flowers and things these type of things is also a category I look for at the thrift store because they're great for that look that you see everywhere in catalogs and magazines right now where you just clip large branches of almost whatever, Japanese maple, um, evergreens, whatever, and you just have these huge mammoth statement making almost portions of a tree trunk that simulates a tree and you put them in these great big containers. So I'll probably do something like that, but I'm gonna nestle it in this basket and I had a pretty good eye because it fit exactly. That way I have a little bit of additional texture, a little bit more protection for the table surface and it will be very, very stable for me to do a large arrangement of flowering or just leafy branches. And here is another 
another example. I love this one. It's so sweet and delicate. I actually got this at Mockingbird Manor. I love how dear it is. I love the delicacy of the detail work on it. I think this one was, again, a more expensive find. It was like $5. But this, I, I think, is a fun type of thing to leave at your entryway, put your keys in to hold pens. Um, in different places of my house, I have areas where I have my business cards and things, or um, sometimes small brochures that I want to give to people when they come by and see the garden, things of that nature. But I, I like to have things like this to hold, oh, maybe cocktail napkins, that would be a great use for this. Um, or again, I could nestle some kind of flower arrangement in here. But I love this, and it would be really dear to gift someone just a basket like this and then put a little bouquet of flowers in it, tie it up with a sweet ribbon and just give it like that. So I think that could be a really dear May Day or Mother's Day idea. Okay, so this one, let me come back over here, Stuart. I love this one. This might be my favorite one. So I found this little sweet, sweet, I think this is a seagrass basket. Look, it's got a lid that is attached to it. And this is your quintessential May Day basket, you guys. So I just had a plastic leftover container. I think I'd gotten some soup in it from Whole Foods or something. Put that in there, filled it up with water. Then I took clippings from the garden. This is actually a small little redbud tree. And I tried to keep, I pulled it out and I tried to keep the roots attached. So if the recipient of this wants to try to plant it and grow it, they can. I I've got some clippings of Obsession Nandina in here. That's a Southern Living plant. I have, what else do I have in here, Stuart? Um, just different color carnations. The other half of the bouquet that I put in this one. So this has about $2 worth of flowers in it and a really sweet, sweet $5 basket. I love this one. I think it's adorable. I got this at one of my little shops along Western. And this would make the perfect kind of May Day basket to hang on someone's doorknob. Maybe ring the doorbell and run away. I think that would be fun. I've actually got a friend across the street who's um, a caregiver for her husband who has Alzheimer's. And she needs a little cheering up, so I think I might do that. This might be a basket hit and run. I might just hang this leave this for her it'll put a smile on her face and this might be my favorite one I think it's really really sweet let me see if I've forgotten anything else let's go back over here because another category that I kind of look for um, always are pictures and pottery so this I just little inexpensive this was uh, I don't know a home collection I don't know what this is but I love to I love looking for little tiny pictures like this and you guys you can cut almost anything from your garden to fill these little vases and these little pictures I love the fact that this has a dual use as both a pitcher and a vase but look I could fill it how sweet would that be to fill it with some of my own columbine the yellow or the purple columbine um, I over here, Stuart, can you follow me over here? This Sweet Henry Sweet Spire, or Little Henry Sweet Spire, I should say, is just coming into bloom. And wouldn't it be dear if I filled this with that Sweet Spire, Stuart? or cut some really large branches to fill in one of my other containers. I think that would be very, very dear. Or I could do a combination of a, diff of a few different things. And then just hang a little tag on here that says, surprise, happy May Day. I think that would be really, really a dear little gift. And you can so often find these pictures. Um, sometimes it might be 
just half of a set of a creamer and a pitcher set. Um, just little, oh, just they're just everywhere in, in Goodwill. Uh, some of them are porcelain, some of them are pottery, some of them are metal, and these make perfect little May Day gifts. You could just fill it with any kind of, of greenery. It doesn't have to be expensive. On the contrary, I think this would be adorable. Get a bunch of these for your kids or your grandkids, give them some scissors, some blunt scissors, let them go out into the garden, cut some things, and fill these little inexpensive pictures to give to grandmothers, to give to mothers, to give to teachers. I think that would be so dear because I could see a really, really sweet arrangement in here of just dandelion flowers. <laughs> or hen bit. I think that would be so cute. So that's another idea. Just get a whole bunch of these and they're so inexpensive. Just keep a box filled with them, have them on hand. So then when you want to give a teacher's gift or you want to bring just a little smile present or a little hostess gift to someone that you're visiting. If you're gonna visit someone else's garden, bring a little bouquet and you'd have also a little inventory of all of these kind of sweet little vases, vases to take with you. I've got one last one to show you and then we'll go inside. Thank you for reminding me, Stuart. Um, I'm going to pot this one, at least temporarily pot this up. This is one of those rippled jade plants that I am so fascinated with. I got this at Bustani when we were here the other day, and I love the way it looks in this kind of earthy vibe. So I t had originally taken it out of its plastic pot, but I think I'm going to put it back in here. I'm going to put then that plastic pot into this clay container this glazed clay container because it doesn't have drainage that way the plant can be taken out and this will be kind of a different kind of gift to give to someone this would be the perfect type of thing to give to my son and daughter-in-law or maybe even to somebody like Stuart because it's got kind of a more masculine masculine vibe so Stuart have I forgotten anything did we give enough ideas to people that they can surprise did we do a Oh, we didn't do a question of the day. Oh, no. Um, so what <laughs> would you put from your garden? What would you, and we might need to cut this out and put it at the front, Stuart, so that people don't miss it. We'll, we'll figure something out. <laughs> um, but what would you guys clip and cut from your own gardens to put into these little Goodwill and thrift store finds? What would you put in them? Who would you gift them to? And which one of these is your favorite? There's a multi, a multiple choice. You can select any one of those questions to answer for the day. So there you go. This was a lot of fun. Stuart, let's do a little epilogue by going inside and showing the flower arrangement I've got in there. So you guys have a great Saturday. Well, this is kind of an impromptu, let's move inside little epilogue, but I did want to show you, so the lighting may not be great, but I did want to show you this gorgeous arrangement that I made of the delphinium. I have all sorts, I have, ooh, some of this golden barberry in here. I've got some Oakland holly, new growth from Oakland holly, all of the other kind of components that I had in some of the flowers that I showed you outside, I did another similar arrangement that I'm gonna take upstairs and put in my office. But when we walked back in, I told Stuart, I said, oh my gosh, I forgot the favorite thrifted, thrifted arrangement that I made. So I'm gonna show you that now. It was on my kitchen table. And that is this one. I love this little basket. Stuart, can we see that? Is the light yeah, good I'm enough? Gonna, I'll, I'll switch okay. Sides I got the sun on this. So okay, so go. I Perfect. love this sweet little basket. It's got a handle on it. This basket was just $2.50, and I filled it with the most fragrant flower of all, I think. This is beautiful stock. I just have, in fact, I left it enough room so you could see. Stuart, can you show down in there how I've just got a leftover container, yeah. a plastic container in there? And then I've just filled it with some stock that's being held together by, uh, held in place by a flower frog. 
but this one was my favorite arrangement and I forgot to take it outside to the table to show you. So forgive me, but I definitely wanted to make sure that you saw this one because this was my, this was really my favorite one. So this person um, might be a really special person that I give this to. Maybe I'll give it to Hubs, who knows. So I wanted to make sure that I showed you these, how they looked in place and what I do with some of my thrift store finds. So once again, thank you for hanging out with me on this Saturday morning. You guys have a good one. Well, yesterday we shot, or the last video we shot, we shot in the evening. And this one we're shooting in the morning. And the light really is just so beautiful. But it also partly explains my outfit today, which is maybe a little wonky. But I am getting ready later this morning to do a book signing in Enid. So we're shooting early so we can drive up there. And I didn't want to put on my kind of work clothes quite yet when I was outside playing in the garden. I had some watering to do and some other things like that. So I am kind of just in what I think of as Chatelaine attire. Now, I love the word Chatelaine. It's kind of like when you are the caretaker of your own domicile. And I think I want to like, like bring back the concept of a house dress, which is just a loose, remember the house dresses of the 60s and the 70s? I know my mom used to have them and my grandmother. And they were just loose fitting things that you wore around the house while you were puttering, especially in the morning. So I've got one on today that I bought in Santa Fe. It's linen, it has that kind of Brooke Gianetti vibe that's kind of um, it's just earthy and natural and very very comfortable and this one I'm covering it up with my apron but this one also has pockets so it's really really wonderful and it makes a wonderful little house dress kind of in between your pajamas and your regular attire for the day it's very comfortable and yet it's a little it's a little bit more modest than if you're outside in your pajamas um, and then i just have a william sonoma apron on i have my fancy earrings on that i will be wearing with my outfit later in the day for my book signing and then i just have some foot form foot form shoes on so there you go if you held on this long that is my outfit du jour